will continue with the um, the pile foundation. Yesterday we were looking at T jet and Q jet. We will now look at the lateral capacity. Just before that, we'll just touch upon the uh, effect of you know the scouring of soil around the pile. I think uh, we will be talking about this topic in detail: the causes and the type of scour and the material uh, characteristics around the pile after driving. So, but in general, the scour can be classified into two categories. One is the overall scour. The soil gets removed, uh, you know, in a larger part of the area surrounding the structure, or there could be a localized scour. What you see from this picture, you know, around the the structure, the causes and the nature of scour and and the type and a lot of details will be discussed later. But what is the effect of this on the uh, T jet and Q jet? What we have seen, T jet may be a very little effect because uh, sorry, uh, Q jet will be very little effect because it will be very deep at the tip of the pile whereas, the T jet effect at the nearer surface will have effect because some soil is permanently removed that means, the skin friction is not available at the first few meters. Now, typically the local scour and the general scour uh, you know depending on the site, depending on the characteristic of soil, depending on the flow around the structure for example, if it is a calm water no scour can happen. So, generally scour is associated with the current in the near vicinity of the structure where you are constructing. For example, if you have a river flow or a steady stream of current which you might have studied in your hydrodynamics as well in design course we were talking about you know the, the ability of the flow to carry the particles lying on the surface of seabed. You know if the specific gravity of the particles are smaller it gets carried away easily if it is heavier like uh, solid particles of sand and gravel may not be able to carry forward. And that is why when we are talking about scour means sometimes we provide a scour protection in terms of bigger rocks, so that they do not get carried away. But natural scour can be classified into like a general overall scour if the flow velocity is so uniform that it carries a lot of particles around and takes away. Whereas, the local scour is typically associated with the circulation and the uh, you know the eddy formation very close to the structure itself. For example, if you go around stand in the beach you will realize scouring is happening every time when you step into water I think you can easily understand the idea why it happens you know in the near vicinity of the structure the circulation happens if there is a uh, flow around and also eddy and tries to lift the particles up and the stream of current carries away as you as soon as the particles get slightly lifted off from the seabed. So, that means flow velocity obstruction and the uh, specific gravity of particles are three parameters which is associated with the scouring. Now, this covering what it does to our stress especially with respect to uh, vertical uh, overburden pressure it reduces because if you see here the general scour 2 meter of material is removed away. That means, when you are talking about uh, overburden pressure at just any depth below this much of material is not there. Even though you could you could also conclude that the skin friction is lost in this depth, but also the effect of that below down because the overburden pressure reduces. Once the overburden pressure reduces whether you are calculating alpha or beta also going to reduce. So, that is why uh, you know this covering needs to be taken into account when you are trying to do either bearing capacity calculation or T jet Q jet calculations how much of the soil is removed. Of course, if you look at the general scour is very easy to understand you know basically the, that much of height is removed. Whereas, the local scour it is not exactly that you are going to remove the total depth of local scour from your overburden calculation because some amount of soil still exists you, you see here triangular wedge. So, you could take advantage of uh, that we will see the calculations uh, little later on. With that I think we could conclude uh, the understanding of vertical capacity and vertical capacity related to the displacement. So, we had T jet Q jet. We will quickly uh, go on to um, this problem we have seen already on to a lateral capacity of uh, uh, you know pile foundations which is very similar idea only thing is the, the approach will be uh, several means I have lots of uh, different methods we need to find out which will be suitable for what type of situation. So, this lateral capacity unlike we have a, a vertical capacity wherein uh, assembly of skin friction and uh, end bearing very straightforward method uh, whereas, here we got um, you know various methods proposed depending on a relative stiffness of the pile and the soil and that is what we are going to see how the pile is going to behave if it is a clay type of soil 
how the pile is going to behave if it's a sandy material or rock or a mixture of uh, you know multiple layers how the pile is going to behave and if the pile is steel pile how it's going to behave if it's a concrete pile how the behavior will be or if the pile is very short or very long like if you talk about uh, coastal structures you have about 10 meter 15 meter shallow depth piles how they will behave in terms of uh, uh, lateral bending and displacement if it is offshore st structural systems like jackets you have 100 meters of pile going down into the ground so when you are applying a horizontal load to the system how the bending behavior and the displacement behavior so depending on this situation you have to select one of them and then suitably apply so we'll just go into a little bit of basics as you can see here uh, when offshore structure is supporting uh, you know the superstructure which is predominantly gravitational loads you know you, you might have a uh, little bit of wind load very similar to onshore structures but then the magnitude of it is not going to be too high but the substructure is subjected to reasonable amount of uh, wave and current loads which is what is causing uh, you know the horizontal displacement of the structure now that's the reason why we try to embed the foundation into the ground imagine if it is only a pure gravitational load and if you have sufficient bearing capacity at the surface we don't need to really worry about it you know the structure will be stable in terms of vertical equilibrium as well as horizontal equilibrium or even overturning equilibrium now because of the substantial amount of horizontal loads you won't be able to substantiate without embedding the foundation into the ground that's why the more the horizontal load you will see that uh, uh, starting from 1 meter below ground normally if you look at the residential building they don't dig too much of depth for foundation maybe 5 feet 10 feet you know shallow foundation with spread footing but as you go even in onshore structures high rise buildings 10 stories 15 stories you will start going for uh, reasonable depth of embedment of foundation system so that the horizontal stability as well as the overturning stability is achieved without much problem so basically you see here in a typical offshore structure you know the thumb rule is if you have a 100 meter water depth very easily your pile foundation is another 100 meters you can see the order of magnitude is almost but does not mean that uh, you know 20 meter water depth you have only 20 meter pile there also you will have at least 50 to 60 meter uh, pile foundation depending on the situation of the soil layers but typically most of the shallow water structures ranging from 50 to 100 meters the pile foundation is almost more than the depth of water or the jacket depth itself so that's the kind of foundation system we are looking at if you have that's why i have just uh, drawn the the sketch also in the order of magnitude you can see double the height of the jacket as the pile foundation length you see at the bottom we we have already characterized the vertical springs or so called the the frictional resistance between the pile and the soil as a, a linear or non linear spring which describe the characteristics as soon as you apply the load the load is getting transferred from the jacket and to the pile and to the soil spring as the soil springs take the load the jacket and the whole system is trying to settle down similarly if you look at horizontal loads arising from wave current and wind are trying to displace the structure since the piles are driven through the structure itself so it's going to bend the piles and transmit the loads at the seabed level to the pile itself because beyond which is only pile is there there is no structure now this pile will definitely transfer or transmit the horizontal loads to the neighboring soil around creating forward pressure depending on whether the load is in the forward direction or in the negative direction so if there is a load in this direction the soil beneath in this area is going to get compressed depending on the characteristics imagine if it is only a one type of soil just uniform characteristics from top to bottom then you will see a, a specific load or the pressure versus displacement and that's what we are looking at how much is getting compressed depending on if it is a very dense material like a dense sand it's not going to be getting compressed that much because the particles are fully uh, filled the voids ratio is less but imagine if you have a very soft clay is going to get compressed and it's going to move a lot so that's why we need to find out this characteristics because after all the displacement at the top of the structure is very important because it's operational related if it is moving too much back and forth you may not be able to do the 
you know the drilling and production that efficiently as you will consider in the onshore structure onshore uh, oil fields. So, that is why the horizontal displacement though it may not be very critical unlike uh, residential building or uh, other buildings on land where you know the large movements can cause other functional failures it could be cracks it could be uh, uh, you know uh, damage to your uh, architectural finishes unable to utilize. So, functional requirements can be violated fortunately in offshore structures this is not the real case you know most of the structures are built using ductile material like steel you may not be really worried about a small displacement like we call it small even it is meters whereas in onshore structures if you have meter means it's disaster isn't it so that's why uh, because we build using ductile material the displacement is not a real cause for concern unless it goes to a level where it actually prevents us from doing the the functions such as drilling and production where they are not limited by 10 millimeter 15 millimeter 20 millimeter it could be several centimeters of uh, displacement. So, but though we, we, we have a, a luxury of larger allowable displacement we should still uh, evaluate what is the type of behavior in the soil because the larger the displacement it is not only the displacement we are worried the stresses in the pile itself is going to increase because larger the displacement more the bending moment more the bending moment is going to cause additional stresses. So, that is where we have to see whether it is a small displacement problem or a large displacement problem and uh, that is why we need to evaluate this each type of characteristics of soil how it is going to behave. And as we discussed yesterday regarding the vertical spring we can we can also characterize the soil as a, a horizontal spring as you can see from uh, the sketch with a, a relative stiffness of the pile and the soil. Imagine if you have a very rigid pile very large EI value it is not at all going to bend and the pressure that is going to be put onto the, the soil is going to be very minimum because the hard work is done by the pile or the other way around if the pile is too flexible is unable to take any load is just going to bend as much you apply the load is straight away put the pressure on the soil. Now, you can see the relationship between the pile and the soil is going to be very important to find out what will be the net displacement. If the pile is too rigid you will get a slightly different behavior if the soil is very bad and still you will get a different. So, the relationship between we call it the pile soil stiffness ratio is uh, relative stiffness we call it is very very important and that is going to characterize how the behavior is going to be that is why the uh, the EI value plays a major role and if you turn this problem into upside down basically make it horizontal is nothing but the beam on elastic foundation you might, you might have studied in your applied mechanics uh, uh, course in the in the BTEC time you just make this whole thing horizontal you know the, the beam is resting on a stiffness which is in this case is soil and if you have a uniform stiffness is going to just bounce back like this if it is a non uniform stiffness like what we have here because the soil at the top is going to be very uh, loose and soft and as you go down it is going to be. So, you will have a non uniform response behavior and that is what we are going to study in this particular uh, topic and several methods we will just go through one by one and uh, the terminology called the pile head is nothing but the connection between the superstructure or so called substructure to the, the soil pile uh, interface and most of the time pile head is taken at the mud line unless you have a larger seabed covering then the pile head will move down to wherever the covered surface of the seabed just now we were seeing local scour versus general scour is the transition between the structure to soil it is called the pile head and that is the place where we normally derive the forces from the uh, you know the dead weight plus the environmental conditions. Now, if you if you look at this picture we could actually uh, idealize ourselves uh, into analysis of the system in several means and in, in fact we do this uh, many times uh, some some cases for example, we want to limit ourselves to a linear analysis in an early stage of the project where we do not want to spend too much of time we could easily find out uh, spring at the tip of the structure where it could represent the whole of pile soil below the seabed. So, if you are able to find out an equivalent spring which could be linear and can be supported there instead of a rigid support 
what we are trying to place here is a spring support. So, once you do that, then the structure analysis and design becomes quite simple. Many, many times we try to do this uh, because it is quite simple. It linearizes the foundation into a uh, from nonlinear to linear, and the calculation for the substructure and the superstructure becomes very straightforward. Or even we can go into an approximation where you can assume after certain depth the pile behaves no displacement that means it is almost fixed at that particular depth. That means when you apply a horizontal load the pile does not get influenced below this depth and that point of fixity where we can arrive by thumb rules several thumb rules are available. Of course, this also can be calculated in a semi empirical manner using the relationship between the pile rigidity and the soil flexibility which is also sometimes if you look at some of the Indian codes they do recommend this type of uh, semi empirical methods which are very useful in a way because it is very quick you get the uh, idea of the behavior of the structure uh, in few few minutes. So, that you can solve the problem. The last one or uh, the most commonly used for offset structures is basically a complete set of springs normally non linear we do not not we do not linearize it because of the nature of soils that we have and you apply you divide the pile into several sub segments like what we saw in a picture in this picture the other day we were seeing something similar like this you divide the pile into various sub segments each segment is attached with a horizontal spring and uh, you solve using several techniques historically um, uh, you know finite difference I think you might have heard of this word called finite difference scheme is a forward marching iterative scheme uh, is has been used for several decades to solve a problem where you do not have a closed form solution not only structures it could be fluid mechanics or other uh, uh, problems in uh, in science and engineering and that is the method which is very very uh, easy to write a simple code you can even write yourself which has been in use for several uh, decades, but in the recent times this has been replaced by uh, finite element techniques. I think some of you might be going through the finite element course slightly uh, better than the finite difference. The approximation is very uh, close and the, the iterative scheme will be faster compared to the finite difference. So, that is why we will find uh, uh, in the recent programs or softwares most of the time they use a finite element methodology whereas earlier uh, you know maybe 10 years back still uh, people were using a finite difference scheme why we need and all that we will just go in detail a little later so these are the three commonly adapted solution techniques to solve a structure foundation problem so the first one is basically the closed form solutions as you can see uh, if you look at little closer with mathematics background you could actually derive some solutions to the interface between the structure pile and the soil, but unfortunately uh, it could be solved for single pile situation. For example, only one pile is driven into the ground and then you have soil of a particular nature single layer. Uh, Brinch Hansen and Broms both of them have done uh, excellent work over the last 25 years and have presented several uh, uh, research papers. Some of them are uh, you know like uh, first class work basically the, the <coughs> basic work which are uh, useful. In fact, even today we, we do use uh, such type of solutions for simplified structures, but we could not apply that to the jacket type of structures because we have multiple piles and the behavior with multiple layered soil is not going to be very easy to apply these principles. So, we normally go into a, a numerical solutions which is what we were talking about either a linear spring or a non-linear spring. Both of them you could uh, solve using finite difference and finite element. Of course, linear spring we do not even need to go to finite difference because once you have a linear spring any simple matrix methods can solve straight away the solutions to the displacement. The last one I think very commonly used for answer structures, bridges uh, you know depth of fixity is very easy to obtain as long as you are able to represent the soil by means of a particular uh, characteristics which is basically the lateral compression characteristics. We call it subgrade reaction, subgrade pressure and if you are able to get the characteristics then you relate that with the relative stiffness of the pile 
and find out how much it could actually bend where could be the bending moment maximum as you can see it's just like a cantilever if you go back to this picture you know the whole jacket is going to behave like a cantilever as soon as you have sufficient fixity into the ground somewhere below the ground the pile is going to get almost fixed means the rotation will be zero so basically that is the point we are looking at where the rotation is going to be zero and that point is called depth of fixity so this method in fact if you are able to predict the depth of fixity very correctly to an accuracy of plus minus 10% i think that's the best method because you don't need to really struggle for non linear and linear springs because still your predicted displacement using this method is going to be 100% correct as long as the fixity depth is evaluated correctly then you just solve as a the great advantage of this method is once you get this depth of fixity the problem becomes a structural problem rather than soil structure interaction problem because after that you don't need to worry about soil once the pile is fixed then the, you can forget about the soil surrounding the point above the point of fixity whereas numerical method you have to do a lot of work basically you need to find out that py relationship from the soil characteristics that means you need to have a stress strain characteristics of soil so that means you have to go for back to triaxial test where your normal loading versus your uh, displacement or stresses has to be measured and take that and then put it into developing such relationship it's going to be substantially hard work and uh, sometimes many times you find that data is not available nobody have done any uh, uh, laboratory testing so how do we assume so that is that's going to be a big challenge even today because not always uh, you know every layer of the soil or a sample that you bring to the laboratory uh, you are going to get tested and then you have the uh, strain and stress relationship i think i have already described uh, uh, most of them we will go in in some detail each one of the method <coughs> we will see the <coughs> passive lateral head pressure reaction theory at little later stage so i will not explain just now so the general idea of a uh, of a pile subjected to horizontal load so you can see here uh, in this cartoon picture when you apply a load to the pile tip at the top of course it need not be uh, something like this it can be even higher you know if you look at a coastal structure this depth of uh, pile from the seabed to the top could be substantially larger like 10 meter 15 meter or 20 meter that's why this e value generates additional moment at the pile head near the soil uh, seabed so when you apply a horizontal load something like this so what happens is the soil is getting squeezed near the surface of the seabed and that's going to provide you with a passive earth pressure from the reverse direction and as the pile is trying to bend towards this direction you can see here it depending on the ei or the rigidity of the pile the pile is either trying to bend or trying to rotate or the pile <coughs> may actually try to move horizontally for example if you take a very shallow depth say 2 meters and just embed into the into the seabed soft maybe and just try to apply a horizontal load the whole pile can actually move horizontally depending on if the pile is very large may be rigid and very shallow so that is exactly the three behavior it can move horizontally or it can bend or it can rotate about a point which the pile itself will find an equilibrium because the applied load is here the resistive <coughs> in the backward direction and as the pile try to rotate you could see here there is a active reaction coming here so that is basically the one method proposed by brin sampson as early as 1970s and very commonly used even today for um, uh, you know concrete piles in uh, near shore or coastal applications because most of the behavior will be something like this so we need to find out about which depth we call it the depth of rotation we need to find out by iteration you can easily uh, find this by means of a simple equilibrium of moment if you take moment about the point of application of load you could find out at what depth this whole system will be in equilibrium because if the applied moment is more you know basically the pile will topple so that is where uh, minimum depth of embedment needs to be found for example if you have a very shallow depth of pile apply too much of horizontal load what will happen the pile will just come out and that's where 
ZR will not be able to find out. So, we need to find what is the minimum depth of embedment in order that the pile will behave in this kind of notation. So, the, his work initial work was so useful at that time uh, even uh, the large depth pile foundation was just started to be uh, used in uh, both in onshore and offshore construction. So, he published several uh, good papers. In fact, he has got uh, design charts even now I think many people are referring you know you can take his design charts and apply later we will see the, uh, the charts itself. The other methodology if the pile is very much uh, longer and uh, slightly ductile material like steel pipe piles and driven into the ground for a very large depth and when you try to apply a load this is what will happen basically the beyond certain depth the pile itself is not influenced by the, the application of load because by the time it is already distributed to the soil. So, that means, it is almost going to behave like the depth of fixity below, below which the pile is having no influence. So, in this case what really happens you can see here as the pile is getting displaced from one direction to other the soil near the seabed is trying to come out heave up because it is getting squeezed into it and the soil will just heave up to some extent and the, the top layer of the soil is going to get more squeezed away that means, <coughs> you are going to get loosening of the material although already you have a, a less denser material number one or maybe a soft clay and uh, the strength is at, at comparing the deeper layers is going to be lesser. So, the, the idea behind the proposal from uh, Britain Sanction for deeper piles is something like the top soil is lesser um, reactive against the horizontal load compared to the soils below. So, he assumed for uh, typical numbers an empirical number like 8 to 12 times C u and d is the projected width of the pile you know basically to get the resistance coming from the pile itself. So, 8 times C u so 8 or 12 is the number that we typically take it last time for vertical bearing capacity called n c you know. So, similar here is a lateral bearing capacity factor which is 8 to 12 and as you come down to the near the seabed as the soil is squeezing up and uh, you know not providing uh, larger resistance he assumed a smaller. So, the he assumed a, a simple profile of a, of a parabolic curve up to a depth of 3 diameter below which you will see a uniform uh, resistance. Based on this work uh, basically API has modified this slightly and has adapted at 20 30 years later. So, this is what we will see later in the API uh, code that the work done by um, Prince Hansen and basically you can see here this is the number adapted by API after a lot of uh, review and experimental studies they come up with the number instead of 8 to 12 we will be using 9 for uh, the application to offshore structures. So, how do we find out the point of rotation as I explained earlier is a simple uh, equilibrium uh, check and uh, the soil reaction on either side is to be balancing the applied moment. In order to find out uh, you know the basic rotation point we need to find out what is the reactions coming from the soil for for us to do that uh, Brinch has provided uh, uh, coefficients he call it uh, passive pressure coefficients which is very similar to what we have seen some charts of N c, N q and N gamma for vertical bearing capacity and uh, he produced such graphs for a typically sandy type of material k q and uh, k c of course, you will have a cohesive component because it is a C phi soil and for various angles of uh, internal friction with depth versus diameter b is in this case is diameter and k q and k c are the empirical coefficients which you need to read from this graph before you can use his method of uh, assessment. Basically you see here the, the passive resistance from the soil is calculated as a summation of the overburden pressure which is basically at any depth you can calculate the soil weight above multiplied by k q plus if you have in that soil 
you know undrained shear strength if it is a C phi soil or a C soil then you can multiply by the uh, KC value from this chart. So, once you arrive at the resistance is offered by the, the soil against the pile uh, load or the pile pressure is put onto the soil then we can go back to this solution to the equation, but before that this is suitable for rigid piles. So, now we have to define what is rigid piles, how we actually classify whether it is a pile is a rigid or slender. Then can be applied to piles in layered soil one great advantage because before this period before Brin Hansen brought uh, this method many times we simplify uh, that we want to solve the problem in a single layer manner. Though you have different properties we try to get a generalized soil property so that we can solve the problem easily, but once he introduced this method it was quite useful applicable to both sand and clays this is also another great advantage based on effective overburden pressure and coefficients were produced or provided by him based on his test results. And once you find out this P z you just go back to this picture you try to draw the passive resistance from the soil in terms of uh, you know the pressure along the depth. Now, what we do not know is the point where it is going to change direction. So, in order to get a slightly accurate uh, uh, result we divide the layer into several if it is a single soil type of layer you divide them into maybe less number of uh, subdivisions or if it is changing characteristics at several locations you can still further fine tune it and divide into several sub layers. Each sub layer you could find out the overburden pressure multiplied by corresponding the coefficients or the passive resistance coefficients obtained from the chart and you can find out the pressure resistance from the soil itself. So, every layer you can find out then take moment about this point and iterate until equilibrium because basically for the system to be in equilibrium the moment at the point of load application is 0. So, you can do that that is what I have written here each layer the corresponding resistance multiplied by diameter because is diameter is the projected width now. So, that much of resistance will come and multiplied by the thickness of the layer which is nothing but the total depth divided by number of divisions which just an algebraic idea and take moment and equate to 0 find out iteratively to which rotation point about which the depth is x you keep adjusting the edge x value until you get moment is equal to 0. You can assume an arbitrary value you will find the net moment is some amount if it is positive you move down if it is negative move up. So, just you have to just write a simple computer code or uh, excel spreadsheet. In terms of examination point of view I think maybe we try to give you two iterations or maybe three iterations and two layers. So, you should still practice this so that uh, you will be able to solve such a problem. So, basic idea is trying to figure out where the point of rotation once you know the point of rotation then we can actually find out what will be the capacity because once that is known then you can take moment about the point of rotation itself and find out what will be the maximum load value that you can apply for a given factor of safety and uh, you know basically very similar to uh, the factor of safety we had for uh, vertical load minimum of 2 for operationals. Uh, condition and then 1.5 for storm condition. But one important thing we need to realize here is not only the soil going to govern uh, the the maximum capacity that can be applied the pile also is going to govern. So, whatever the maximum load that you are finding from the soil you need to also limit that to the maximum bending moment capacity of the pile itself. For example, if it is a concrete pile you can find out the moment of resistance in bending. Uh, as usual bending moment calculation for the RC structure and find out whether the bending moment produced by the applied, applied load of HU is going to be less than that or not. Because otherwise instead of soil governing the design the, the structure part of the pile governs the design. So, you have to limit that and basically that is very important check otherwise you may be thinking soil can take so much load, but the pile bef beforehand fails. So, this method is quite useful. The idea is you divide into several sub layers find out the rotation point after the rotation point 
then you find out take moment because rotation point moment also will be 0 and find out what load you will be able to consider at what height the height is the e is more then you will have a moment is going to be more. So, this Brin Hansen method we will try to solve one problem probably in the tutorial. The next one is the Brown's theory which is slightly uh, away from uh, the methodology proposed by uh, Brin Hansen. He has assumed very similar to the assumptions made by Brin Hansen for clay type of soil you know some kind of pressure distribution below and uh, try to solve uh, both types of files rigid and then slender. So, clay and sand as well as rigid and short or long and slender both uh, only he has taken the uh, the later part of uh, Brin Hansen proposal with 9 times C u and 1 and a half times depth instead of uh, uh, 3 diameter variation he assumed first 1 to 1 and a half diameter there is no strength of the soil that can be taken something like this something like this uh, basically the first few meters of the soil has no strength as you can see mostly soil will be very much uh, loose number one and when the pile is trying to put pressure on the soil soil will actually squeeze away. Uh, so, that is his idea of uh, assumptions and mostly very common uh, it is going to happen like this for sandy type of material he has assumed a linear distribution of passive resistance rather than uh, uniform or uh, curvilinear. So, you can see here uh, it is proportional to the overburden pressure not not like uh, a constant value of 9 times C u which is going to be below the 3 diameter. And in this case he has provided some information to find out how do we relate the pile stiffness with the soil stiffness and come up with the so called uh, pile soil rigidity parameter or pile soil flexibility parameter and he has given some recommendations on what is the number that you can decide whether it is a rigid pile or a uh, slender pile. Let us look at uh, some of the cases he studied and published in uh, one of the geotechnical journal with closed form solutions of course, very simplified he got about uh, 9 or 10 cases I have just provided few of them. So, he just look at uh, clay soil short pile top head restrained very similar to a situation in uh, onshore structures uh, most of the industrial structures on land you will have a group of piles few of them together with a pile head on the top. I think if you if you go around uh, you will see they will not go very deep they will be very small diameter piles instead of one pile bigger one they will have many and cast with a big concrete uh, pile head you know something like this on top of which you will have the structure going up you know. So, something like this the behavior is almost like a sliding you know simply when you apply a horizontal load. So, the resistance that is going to come is something very similar to what you see as a rectangular diagram clay type of soil and the pile is reasonably rigid all the piles are interconnected you may have 4 piles 8 piles 10 piles and then you have a very massive pile head we call it pile cap and because of that it is not allowing the pile to bend because it is very short and it's trying to move and provide a passive resistance so called a soil reaction is just proportional to the diameter of the pile or size of the pile in this case many times they use uh, concrete piles of square in nature you know if you go around uh, many industrial developments they will use a square sections in the earlier days they used to use timber piles you know good seasoned timber and the top soil about 1 to 1 and a half diameter or uh, the soil effect is removed. So, you could see the maximum bending moment is a reverse cantilever pile head is fixed and soil is trying to provide reaction. So, you can see the bending moment is going to happen almost at the vicinity of the pile pile head interface and that is the idea very similar to most of the classical uh, uh, near shore coastal structures where uh, you build uh, industrial structures and even jetties this very similar structure we do it in uh, the dolphins you know you have a ma massive pile head, but the pile is embedded into the seabed with and without some amount of water depth. So, this is the first one you could uh, see 
the second one clay slightly longer pile not as that as what we were uh, uh, talking about earlier on still restrained at the top but the pile itself is slightly slender maybe deeper depth or smaller diameter and you could see here it's is trying to behave similar to the rotational characteristics but also with respect to the bending at the top of the uh, pile head and uh, the assumption is still same first one and a half diameter is no strength to be taken and then after which you can have where the uh, the change of reaction from positive to negative this just needs to be moved up so basically this is a point which needs to be found by iterative means to get an equilibrium of uh, forces either moment or the horizontal shear the next one is very similar to the brin hansen proposal where the pile is very long and going to get a maximum bending at some depth which is called uh, the point of fixity only thing is it can also have the maximum moment depending on whether it's at the this point or at the point where it's slightly below so this is all these cases he has provided uh, equations which i think at the end i have summary summary of those equations which is hard to um, uh, memorize some of them uh, will be very long which i have not typed i have the paper in the first three cases we saw the pile is connected to the pile head with a rigid pile cap and the, the next three cases you see here uh, short pile unrestrained head long pile unrestrained head so the only difference is the pile head is not connected to the the rigid pile cap which is making slight difference in behavior so it could actually rotate in this fashion based something like this or it could make a bending and uh, governed by the overall displacement or by the bending of the pile itself so that's the only difference when you are trying to come up with the with and without pile head 